Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 271. Fire, fire, fire. Incredible entrepreneurs share their inspiring journey with you every day on Entrepreneur on Fire. Prepare to ignite now. Here's your host with yet another amazing guest, John Lee Dumas. Entrepreneur on Fire. Entrepreneur on Fire. Entrepreneur on Fire. Aloha, Fire Nation. Who doesn't want affordable legal protection? With LegalZoom, you've got it. Just ask one of the dozens of companies on the Inc. 500 list. Go to LegalZoom.com, find the service that's right for you, and enter FIRE in the referral box at checkout. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guests today, Walker Williams and Evan Stites clayton Walker, Evan, are you prepared to ignite? We are ready to ignite. (laughs) All right, guys. Walker and Evan are the co-founders of Teespring. These two Brown University students created a website that leveraged the crowdfunding model to successfully sell a t-shirt to commemorate their favorite college bar that shut down. Within six hours, they had amassed hundreds of pre-order sales via PayPal. Coupled with the success of this momentous sale, they received interest from clubs, communities, and individuals expressing interest in creating similar campaigns for their custom products. And the concept for Teespring was born. Given Fire Nation just a little overview, Walker and Evan, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you. And then give us an overview of your business. Sure. So uh, my name is Walker. I am the non-technical co-founder, which means I do all the easy stuff. (laughs) I was born in New York City, spent a few years in St. Louis, and then uh, spent the ages of 10 to 18 over in New Zealand before coming back for college uh, at Brown, where I met Evan. Yeah, uh, I'm from Oakland, and I'm the technical co-founder, which I guess means that I supposedly do the hard stuff, but um, <laughs> I mean, Walker's underselling himself a little bit. They're, what he does is extremely difficult, too. Oh, what a team. You guys are a match <laughs> made in heaven. <laughs> well, guys, you have some great things going on. You went to a university in an amazing city, Providence, Rhode Island. I'm a Providence College graduate, so I know Brown well. I used to go cross town to Thayer Street for many a drink, and I probably even know the bar that shut down that you guys had to rally behind. So very connected on those levels, and I'm looking forward to dive really deeply into your story. But before we do, guys, we love starting Entrepreneur on Fire off with a success quote to get that motivational ball rolling. So take it away. Our kind of internal mantra is that we try to build painkillers, not vitamins, which uh, for us means that we build things that people really need as opposed to little incremental improvements. Wow. So let's talk about that and bring it down to the ground level. How have you actually built a painkiller as opposed to a vitamin recently? Evan and I actually, we met pretty early on at Brown and we started a company before Teespring, which helped match uh, students to part-time jobs and internships. And what we quickly found is that while people liked it, it didn't solve a big enough pain for people to abandon what they were currently using and jump over. And it ended up, you know, not working out. It it worked out to some extent, but it wasn't a huge success for us. And after that, we really kind of sat down and and thought about what we wanted to do next. And this, uh, you know, saving the bar t-shirt had just gone so well. And we realized that if we were going to do something again, we were going to build something that people just couldn't live without that they absolutely loved. So with Teespring, We looked at the biggest pain points in, you know, selling merchandise, T-shirts, but merchandise in general. And there were kind of three things that people kept saying. Nobody wanted to front the money up front. You know, it's thousands and thousands of dollars to print hundreds of T-shirts. It's a lot of risk to take for one person, especially if you're, you know, organizing something where there's not a big pot of money to draw from. Nobody really knew how many shirts, much less what sizes they knew up front. And they usually ended up ordering too many or too few. And then the third problem was the logistics of getting a huge box of t-shirts and figuring out how to get it to each person, collect cash from them, keep track of who picked up their t-shirt and not, and who hadn't was a huge hassle. So we took those as the three major pain points and we went out just to completely wipe those out and make them non-existent. 
And I think that's what Teespring does. Wow. Well, that's a great way that you have utilized that quote, that mentality with your current company, Teespring. And we're going to move forward from that and talk about a failure. And I know you started talking briefly about it while you were alluding to what pain points Teespring currently solves. But let's really dive into that because I know in our pre-interview chat, that's what you identified as your failure. So I know you're going to dive even more into exactly why that did fail. You started getting into it, but let's really take it down to the ground level and share with us what that company was and why it didn't work. You know, we were young. I don't think we quite understood how much of a commitment a startup is. And when we were building it, we isolated ourselves somewhat and we were so excited about the design and the code. You know, we created this product, what we still think was a a pretty beautiful, useful product. But what we didn't do was leave the house or get on the phone and go talk to real people that needed the product. And that was a, you know, a a major shortcoming on our, our part. Yeah. I think that the main problem that we had, the the product really didn't pass the first test of, is there someone who's knocking on our door right now who wants to use this? And is there anything else out there already that they can use to achieve this same goal? So with Teespring, you know, we're really solving a problem that, that has not been solved where we're solving a problem that people have asked us to solve. And I think before we just kind of, our, our guidelines when we built Jobsel were more about uh, this is something we think people will want. This is something that seems good to us. But it, but it didn't t- pass that test of having someone who is right there on the front doorstep ready to be the first user and excited, uh, not able to do that anywhere else. Wow. Well, we've been going on a little bit of an Eric Reese tangent here in the last few episodes of Entrepreneur on Fire, but it just, again, fits so perfectly with this interview because you guys obviously had not read The Lean Startup, which is all about creating that minimally viable product and getting out there and getting out to your customers and getting real feedback as early as possible and making them actually take their wallets out and vote with their wallets, not just with a nod of the head, but with their wallets. And then again, getting that feedback, begging for it, and then adjusting and pivoting along the way. And so you guys obviously did that with Teespring, which was a huge benefit for a lot of reasons against what you had done in your prior job. And that Eric Reese interview that we did here at Entrepreneur on Fire, he just really breaks down a number of different ways different companies have done it. So any listener, entrepreneuronfire.com slash Eric Reese. It's a home run of an interview. And guys, let's refocus now back on this failure. Just boil it down for Fire Nation. Share with us one clear lesson you learned from that mistake. The lesson is is pretty clear in our minds. It's don't build anything without spending 70% of your time going out and talking to every user you can, really hearing what they have to say. Because what you think you need to build and the reality of what people need and what your customer needs are oftentimes, you know, completely different. Uh, Another thing is don't build anything you wouldn't yourself use. Mm, So while we were designers and programmers who didn't really have too hard a time finding great jobs online and we were wondering, you know, how come every college student can't do that? We hadn't really experienced the grind of a part-time job or, you know, babysitting jobs those types of jobs that we built jobs to solve. So we were going out a little bit blind there, both in terms of speaking to users and being users ourselves. Very powerful stuff, guys. And let's continue down your journey as entrepreneurs, because just like we fail and we have challenges and obstacles, there's also that other end of the spectrum, that aha moment when that light bulb turns on and you say, wow, this resonates with my target market, with my authentic self. This is a passion of mine and a viable business combined into one. Share with us that moment that you guys had and how you turned that moment into success. So our senior year of college, we had a habit of every few months we'd sit down and you know do a side project together. Ooh, Just habit. kind of a hackathon, 24 hours, try to get something up and viable. And, uh, you know, the local bar, local dive bar, kind of a legendary bar at Brown called the fish company got shut down and we decided to do a t-shirt around there. And we called the local screen printer and ran into the exact three problems that everyone had been talking about. We didn't know, we didn't want to pay thousands of dollars. We didn't have thousands of dollars to pay up front to get the shirts printed. We had zero idea of how many we're going to sell. And we didn't want to deal with the hassle of, 
getting those out to the individual buyers. So we created what is remarkably similar to Teespring today, and it's actually still up. It's freefishco.com. And the premise was incredibly simple. If we could get 200 pre-orders for the t-shirts, we would get them printed and fulfilled, directly shipped to people's doorsteps in about two weeks. And we, we had no idea how that was going to do. It was kind of purely for fun. I, we started coding at like 3 p.m. that day. And by 11 p.m., we threw something up live, posted it on Facebook with you know very modest expectations. And just like you said, it just exploded. We had hundreds of sales, thousands of uniques. And I think the, the next morning when we looked at the stats and realized that we had more uniques on that kind of fun side project in a day than we'd had in you know a couple weeks at our other company, Jobsle, and we'd made more revenue than we had in you know months yeah. at Jobsle. That's kind of where you say, okay, wait a minute, there, you know, there might be something here. And then on top of that, we had this host of emails from these different cross sections of campus, from charitable groups, the fraternities, the clubs of people who had T-shirt ideas or T-shirt concepts. But again, we're running into those three roadblocks. So we knew there was something there. And that I, I would say that that was our kind of aha moment. Wow. Well, I love that. And I have to say, I do know that part that you're talking about, Fishco, because I went to Providence College <laughs> from 98 to 02. So I'm older than you guys. And that bar was alive and kicking the entire time I was there. And for the listeners, I'm sure most of you guys have seen the movie, There's Something About Mary. And if you can picture that scene where Matt Dillon sitting at the bar, he's an outdoor bar on the bay with Ben Stiller telling him that Mary is just this huge Godzilla bride that got shipped to Japan or something. <laughs> and he's trying to dissuade Ben from going after her because he has fallen in love with Mary. They're sitting at Fishgow. That was the bar. So, oh, I, yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see those very distinctive um, smoke pipes in the background. It's really cool. And you go back and watch it, you'll definitely see what I'm talking about. So great scene. I went to freefishco.com while you were talking. That t-shirt is tight, has like 273 have been sold thus far. Is that still growing? We actually stopped updating that. So that was like the first, we, we didn't, we were so, we didn't expect any sales. And so we didn't actually code the progress bar to update itself. <laughs> so you just so it was literally in. us just like pushing code up like, okay, this is how many have sold now. So once we actually passed our goal, the original one was 200. We were like, ah, oh, what do we do now? So we raised the goal to 400, kept updating it, but eventually we just gave up. Cool. We ended up selling a, a little bit over 400 shirts. Wow. Good job, guys. Great job. So you've shared with us a challenge and a failure that you've had with a business. You've shared with us an aha moment and how you turned that moment into success. You guys are still pretty young in your journey, but you're successful entrepreneurs. Have you had an I've made it moment? I don't, I don't think we have, you know, the definition of success, I, I think will always be something that's, that's just out of reach. Uh, I think that's something we've kind of come to accept. I think if, if you had, you know, we, we crossed a million dollars a month revenue in April. Uh, I think if you had asked us when we first launched Teespring, if a million dollars a month in revenue was success, I think we would have said yes. But now, you know, we're always focused on, on what's next. So I don't think we're a success yet, but I think we've taken the first steps towards it and uh, it, it looks like it's in sight. I try not to have that moment like that. You know, I made it because uh, that means you're at the end of your journey. And I think it's really important for us to keep this mentality of we're just at the on the first steps of our journey. And I mean, especially because we're so early in our careers, there's no reason for us to start thinking that we've made it or that this is sort of the goal that we set out to achieve. I think the the more we kind of keep ourselves hungry and just keep trying to strive for that that next level of success, the better we'll do. I love that answer. And it makes me think like you might have heard Entrepreneur on Fire before because uh, you just took the words out of my mouth. I love saying that. It's all about the journey. And my definition actually of success is that success is the gradual realization of a worthy ideal. So it really goes along with what you said about how success is just out of reach. Because if it's that gradual realization, it's not like you've arrived. You are gradually realizing a worthy ideal. And that never ends. That never has to end. You can always be on that path with that success bar, always just out of reach as you're gradually realizing it. So that's really powerful. Thank you for sharing that, guys. And let's move up to the 
current times now. Let's bring this to right now, the present. I know you guys have moved cross country to San Francisco. You you were in Y Combinator. Take us through exactly what's been going on with your move. Take us through Y Combinator and take us through what's going on at Teespring right now. For sure. Uh, you know, late last year, we have a personal connection to Sam Altman, who is one of the partners at Y Combinator. And we were kind of talking to him about you know, the, the hurdles we were in, encountering, you know, what we thought was next for the company. And he, you know, let us know that he thought Y Combinator might be able to help us attack those growth challenges. And we decided to take a gamble on it. And we were part of the winter 2013 batch. So let's take Fire Nation on this journey with you because okay. we hear so much about incubators and tech stars and Y Combinators, but we really get to see the inside of it. So take us there. Day one, Walker and Evan arrive at Y Combinator. What's going on? So you walk into a surprisingly modest kind of warehouse type building with a, you know, a relatively small orange Y out front, <laughs> not the, the massive, uh, you know, glitzy offices that I think we, we might've expected. And you're immediately surrounded by, you know, a group of people that definitely made us feel like, uh, you know, <laughs> made us realize that what we were doing was, was a, a solvable problem. There were people doing kind of gesture control, these crazy hardware setups and you're greeted by this Paul Graham, who is just kind of this really inspirational figure, kind of has a, a very conversational tone who immediately starts to get you into it. And he basically says, for the next three months, you will do nothing but eat, sleep, exercise, program, and talk to users. If somebody calls you and says, you know, hey, help me move, you are to say, no, I am working on Y Combinator for the next three months. And these will be the most important three months of your startup's kind of journey. Wow. And from there, it kicks off. You know, it's, it's relatively hands off. So you can request office hours with the partners. There's a dinner once a week where a speaker comes in. But in general, we were in an apartment. The four of us are working, you know, the longest hours we probably ever worked together, uh, all living, eating and kind of sleeping together. And, uh, you know, it, it was just a grind, but I think what it did was allow us to kind of refocus, uh, you know, get, get some amazing insight from, uh, you know, some, some incredible partners who at Y Combinator helped us with the investment side of things. So we didn't have to focus on that. It was, you know, it was eye opening as well to see how many other startups that we had heard of before we moved out had run into the exact same problems that we were facing. You know, we thought that our troubles were unique and it turns out that every company, you know, has the same sort of disorganized, crazy battles uh, in the pursuit of growth. So it was it was incredibly valuable from my perspective. I guess I could tell a little personal story about um, our experience with with Paul Graham, yeah, affectionately right. known as PG uh, by everyone <laughs> at YC. So uh, the first the first day we get there. And we were lucky enough to have booked uh, an office hour session with with Paul, which is you know always a really special experience. And um, he he'll t he takes you outside, and it, it, it's not some stuffy you know office you're sitting around. He likes to kind of take you on a walk while while you're while while you're chatting with him. So so we walk outside, and and you know we're all excited to tell him about about Teespring and get all his his sage advice on on what we should do for the business, but. It, what he does instead is he just kind of hands us this little, I don't know, what looks like a little piece of dirt. And I, I'm just kind of looking at this and I'm like, what is this thing? It's just this little kind of seed or something. And he's like, this is a, a redwood seed that I actually just you know found from a, a redwood pine cone. And it's a symbol because I, I'm giving this to you guys and I want you to take this tiny little seed of an idea and then let it grow into something that's, you know, more massive than any human. So that was the the first thing he said to us right out right out of the door and you know definitely left a lasting impression on me. 
powerful story. Thank you for sharing that. And I hear the name Paul Graham, and I know that he's just such a leadership figure. And it's great to hear these little inside stories and these inside experiences that people are having. So share with us just a little more, because I'm really curious. You said it was pretty hands-off. So you have your apartment. You have the once-a-week dinners with the speakers. Besides that, is there monitoring? Is there anything going on? I mean, how are you being tested along the way? Or how are you giving proof that you are completely focused on this business and nothing else? You know, I think it's part of their philosophy that you're not tested. It's a, you know, it's, it's a competitive world out there. And I think they know that if you can't motivate yourself, you're going to have a really hard time, you know, getting to that point of success. So there is no testing or, very tight monitoring. They have some spreadsheets where they track all the companies on a few, uh, a few metrics, but rarely do they ever reach out unless, you know, you've missed a bunch of dinners and haven't been around a lot. Uh, so they never really reached out to us just anytime we had a problem or a question or, you know, we needed something to give us some perspective. We would hop on, book some office, office hours with a partner or send a partner an email or, you know, after dinner, stay late and gather with uh, whoever was left behind to, uh, t- to talk to. So I don't think that they really prescribed that idea that they need to track every company and make sure they're succeeding. I think that their goal is to give us the, the resources we need to succeed. But it's, it's going to be us that's going to have to walk through that door. They're not going to make it happen for us. Well, before we launch into the lighting round, guys, this is your stage now to talk about Teespring. So share with Fire Nation just some great learning points you had during those three months of being in Y Combinator and then talk about you walking out that door and leaving Y Combinator. Give us an update about Teespring. Where are you guys right now? So I I guess we'll we'll start with where we are today. Uh, You know, we're Every month is a record month and we're on track for a record month this month. So we expect to ship about 75,000 t-shirts and other apparel items this month. Uh, We're expanding into a few different product lines. We have a lot of new designs and features being released. We are up to uh, 25 people in the company, which is really exciting. A bunch of uh, really kind of inspirational people for us that are making us work harder and and teaching us, uh, you know, and, Everything is great on the revenue side as well, so I, I won't dive too much into that. I think what we've learned, again, is to, to, to not lose perspective of where you are. Don't kind of in, insulate yourself. Just, you know, just as we said before, that the most important part of this was getting out there and talking to users and learning what people actually needed as opposed to what we thought they wanted – uh, that remains our you know, biggest focus. So as much as possible, we try to get on the phone with users, communicate with users. I, you know, I, I'm on Skype, our, not our Skype, our Twitter, our Facebook, every single day, seeing what people are saying, reaching out if I see somebody who's unhappy, reaching out if I see somebody who's happy, trying to find out why and kind of replicate that experience. I think it's just, just staying as in touch with people as possible and then never giving up that... Uh, you know, that early stage grind. So anytime I see something, for instance, you know, Entrepreneur on Fire that I think would make a great t-shirt and has an audience that would uh, certainly love t-shirts, we have plenty of podcasts that are, you know, very successful. I'd love to show you uh, how it works and maybe get a, a tee up for you guys. Done. Let's do it. Fire Nation would love Fire Nation shirts. Being part of Entrepreneur on Fire, it's a passionate gig. And I have those people that are always reaching out to me and saying, John, What's going on? Where can I get some Entrepreneur on Fire memorabilia? So you're on. (laughs) That's what I like to hear. (laughs) Good stuff, man. Well, listen, before again, we do dive into the lightning round. Just give us a real brief rundown of your vision for the future of Teespring. We think that Teespring and the mechanics that we've set up are a better way to sell online. When e-commerce came around and the internet kind of, you know, brought, brought the old old traditional store online, it really kind of carbon copied it. It, it, And a traditional retail store is set up for high inventory, you know, stuff on the shelves and then lingering kind of steady demand. Right. And as I'm sure, you know, that's not the way the internet today works. It works in bursts of excitement. And so what Teespring does is we optimize merchandising around those bursts of excitement. And we also completely eliminate 
the barriers to entry for anyone to merchandise. So no longer is it only these big brands with million dollar marketing budgets and enough money to pour, you know, tens of millions of dollars into inventory to sit in some warehouse. Anybody with a passionate community group or cause will be able to come to Teespring and create gear that allows their audience to, you know, express their affinity. So I think that we will be a better way to sell online for almost every vertical with no barrier to entry. That's exciting stuff. And I am really excited to track your guys' progress. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get ready to be protected. Legally protected, that is. Wait, you didn't think I meant... No, never mind. Are you ready to get protected, Fire Nation? Then let LegalZoom help you do just that. Not only do they offer award-winning services at an affordable price, they'll help you every step of the way. No need to be scared. They've got you covered. LegalZoom services have been developed by the best legal minds in the country, and every business they engage with gets personalized attention. I do want to add a quick disclaimer. LegalZoom is not a law firm and provides self-help services at your specific direction. But there's so much more. Now, every LLC and incorporation package includes easy-to-use business accounting software, a $269 value for free. Be sure to enter FIRE in the referral box at checkout. So let's get protected, legally protected. Protect what's yours today. Visit LegalZoom.com. We've now reached my favorite part of the show. We're about to enter the lightning round. And Walker, Evan, this is where I provide you with a series of questions and you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? Sounds sounds good. Yeah. (laughs) What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? I don't think a lot was holding me back. I think mostly it was inexperience. I... um, I, I tried to become an entrepreneur early on, didn't know what I was doing. Um, and uh, I, I worked for some people who, who criticized who criticized me as, as an employee. Uh, and they had some, some comments about, um, you know, my work <laughs> ethic and stuff. And they, they actually told me, they said, hey, Evan, look, uh, you should never have a job where you have a boss. So I took that to heart and I said, all right, from here on out, I'm going to be doing my own thing, working for my own companies. And uh so far, so good. <laughs> Walker? I think for me, I've, I've always wanted to do this. It's been something that uh, it's, it's always been a dream for me. I've been trying to start companies since I was uh, pretty young. I got started in design, then moved to programming, but it was always kind of my hope to be able to do something on my own. If, if I said there was something in my way, it would be again that I uh, you know, hadn't read enough, hadn't learned enough to, to attack it in the way I should. So Hopefully, I've, I've now answered some of those questions and you know, learned enough and, and paid attention enough that uh, we can turn this thing into a home run. Boom. Evan, what's the best advice you've ever received? Best advice I've ever received is uh, just, just, just don't worry about it. You know, sometimes like, things get a little hectic. And uh, I think that you, know, you get in over your head worrying about too, too much about uh, what's going on with the company what's going on in your life and you end up not being able to solve any of your problems. So, um, I think my, my favorite advice I've ever received is kind of just, just don't worry. It's, it's going to be okay. And that, that attitude allows you to actually attack the problems with, with, uh, the clearness of mind that it takes to, to solve all of life's biggest challenges. Mm, great insights. Walker. I mean, I've, I've already said it, but again, it's the, the make painkillers, not vitamins. It was something that someone said to us when we were, in the midst of our first company. And, uh, it's, it's stuck with me, you know, it's become our internal mantra here. And it's something that I, I try to live by. I try to think about everything that I build as whether or not this is something that the people who need our product need, as opposed to just, you know, an, a nicety. So Evan, do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? Internet resource. Um, all right. Well, um, obviously there's Stack Overflow. I'm a programmer, so uh, I'm I'm in love with that. Uh, constantly providing me with insight. Um, there's oh, just one, just one. Oh, that's it. That's it. Stack Overflow. <laughs> all right. Stacker. Well, Fire Nation. You can find the links to this resource <laughs> and everything else that we've mentioned in today's episode by going to entrepreneuronfire.com/teespring. Walker, if you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? 
can I do a little bit of a, a switch and say, as opposed to a book, I just recommend that you take a look at Hacker News every morning yeah. and spend, spend an hour reading Hacker News. I think that that, for me, you know, I, I didn't stumble across it until uh, about you know, a year ago, a year and a half ago. And I find that it's just got such a great sec- selection of articles for entrepreneurs. And you know, there's some stuff in there that's more programming related. But if you're not a programmer, you can kind of brush that out of the way. But for me, that's become my kind of go-to resource for interesting insight, stories, success stories, failure stories, a lot of really honest, uh, honest tales of entrepreneurship. Great stuff. Well, listen, guys, this next question is my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? First thing I think I would jump on, you know, we're like living in the same world here. Uh, we're talking about a world that, that doesn't have have the companies that, that we have right now, I think, right? Like Teespring no longer exists. Sure. So um, first thing I'd probably do is just basically start rebuilding it. Um, I know that sounds silly, but for me right now, I think that would be the best strategy. I'm also really into the whole, uh, the whole sharing economy. Um, currently, you think about things like Lyft. Airbnb. Uh, if I had no money and a laptop, I would immediately start trying to engage in those types of services, uh, whether it was providing providing the service or actually creating new communities where people are kind of exchanging services like that. Because if I didn't have a lot of money, I'd want to be involved in, in the online sharing communities. Great stuff. Walker? I'd have to go back to uh, to what I know well, and I'd, I'd jump into, assuming this is an identical world, freelance design, programming, earn enough money that I could uh, cover my rent for you know a few months, food and rent, and I would dive back into another startup and try to make it happen again. Wow, guys. Well, you have given Fire Nation some incredible insights, some incredible advice all along the way. Share how Fire Nation can find you, and then we'll say goodbye. All right. Well, we're teespring.com. That's T-E-E spring.com. Our Twitter account is Twitter at Teespring. You know, you can reach us personally by email anytime at Walker at Teespring or Evan at Teespring. Happy to, happy to answer any questions or talk. You know, we're always available. So feel free to get in touch and uh, hopefully we'll see some of you guys launching some t-shirts. Rockin' Walker, Evan. Thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, your experience. Fire Nation knows they can get the links to everything we've mentioned at entrepreneuronfire.com slash teespring. And Fire Nation also salutes you. We'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you so much for having us. It's been Thank awesome. You. Fire Nation, are you an aspiring or new entrepreneur who's looking for a community of like-minded individuals who can offer support, tools, resources, and advice as you start your entrepreneurial journey? Visit FireNationElite.com to find out more about our elite mastermind group. Fill out an application, schedule a one-on-one 15-minute chat with me, and start your journey today. Thank you for joining us at EntrepreneurOnFire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.